Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder, part of the Chronicles of Exia series. After I stripped my bed of its dirty sheets and stretched out on the mattress, my impression of Marge as a harmless grump of the grudge evaporated. At that moment, I saw that a message had been written on the dust on the desk. It read, Murderer, the noose waits. Chapter 9 I vaulted from the bed. The message disappeared from view, but I didn't feel any better. Little darts of fear pulsed from my heart as my mind leaped from one horrible scenario to the next. Was Marge warning or threatening me? Was she planning to earn the money she'd lost betting against me by turning turning me over to Brazil's goons for a fee? But why warn me, I calmed myself. Once again, I had overreacted. From what I'd seen and heard about Marge, she, her message was probably for the satisfaction of seeing me squirm. A peevish gesture because she was angry at having to do extra work for me. I decided it would be best not to give her any indication that I'd seen or had been affected by her childish note. Thinking back on it, I would bet she had, up, she had also read my journal, leaving it wide open on the desk just to annoy me. Valak had suggested I rest, but I was on edge. I went into Valak's living room. Marge's note had reminded me to stick to my instincts and not to trust a soul. Then my worries would be minimised to tasting for poisons and avoiding Brazil. If only it was that simple, or I was that strong. Naivety and blind trust may have been driven out of me by Brazil and Riyadh. But deep down in the small corners of my heart, I still clung to the hope that I might find a true friend. Even a rat needs other rats. I could empathise with the rats. I, too, scurried around, looked over my shoulder and sniffed for poison traps. Right now, I scrambled just to stay alive until the next day. But someday, I would be searching for a way out. Knowledge was power, so I planned to sit tight to listen and learn all I could. I started with Valak's living area. Lifting a rock off one of the tables, I began to pick my way through the clutter in his suite, surface snooping only because I suspected Valak would booty trap his drawers. I found a couple of texts on poison that interest me, but their contents dealt mostly with assassination and intrigue. Some of the book had worn leather, had worn leather bindings, and were written in an archaic language that I couldn't decipher. Valak was either a collector or he had stolen the books from the Dead King's library. I was at the bottom of the stairs when I noticed a diagram of the castle's layout. It had been wedged into the corner of a picture frame hanging on the right wall of the staircase. Finally something I could use. As I examined the map, I felt as if a translucent mask had been lifted off my face, allowing me to see the castle clearly. Postponing my explorations of the rooms upstairs, I retrieved my journal. The map was displayed in full sight. Valak wouldn't be upset that I had seen it. He'd probably be happy that I didn't need to ask for directions every time I had to go somewhere new. I cleared a space on the couch, wormed into a comfortable position, and began to copy the map. I jerked awake. My journal slammed to the floor. Blinking in the candlelight, my eyes searched the room. I had been dreaming of rats. They had poured down from the walls, welled up from the floor and swarmed after me. A sea of biting rodents that that seized clothes, skin and hair in in their sharp little teeth. A shudder shook my body. I lifted my feet off the floor as I scanned the room. No rats, unless I included Valak. He was halfway around the room, lighting the lanterns. As I watched him finish, I thought about Valak being a fellow rat. No, definitely not. A cat. And not just any ordinary household cat, but a snow cat. The most efficient predator in the territory of Ixia. Pure white. The snow cat was the size of two massive dogs fused together. Quick, agile and lethal, the snow cat killed 
before its prey even suspected danger. They slayed them mostly they stayed mostly in the north where the snow never melted, but they adventured south when the food grew scarce. No one in the history of Ixia had killed a snow cat. The predator either smelled, heard, or saw the hunter before they could get close enough to strike with a handheld weapon. They bolted like lightning upon hearing the twang of a bowstring. The best the northern people could do was feed the cats, hoping to keep them on the snowpack and away from the populated areas. After lighting the last lantern, Valak turned toward me. Something wrong with your room? He picked up a tray and handed it to me. No, couldn't sleep. Valak snorted with amusement. I see. He gestured towards the tray. Sorry your dinner is cold. I was detained. Automatically testing for poisons, I took a couple of small spoonfuls. I glanced at Valak to see if he was offended by the gesture. He was not. His face still held an amused expression. Between bites, I asked Valak if anyone else had a key to his suite. Just the commander and Marge. Will that help you sleep better? Ignoring his question, I asked, Is Marge your personal housekeeper? Mine and the commander's. We wanted someone we could trust, someone instantly recognisable. She was with us before the takeover, so her loyalty is beyond doubt. Valak sat at his writing desk, but turned his chair to face me. Remember when you were in the war room? Confused by the changing subject, I nodded. There were three generals in the room. Brazil, you knew. But can you identify the other two? Teso and Hazal, I answered, proud that I had remembered. Can you describe them? Hair colour? Eyes? I hesitated as I thought back. They had worn generals' uniforms and they had been eating lunch. I shook my head. I think General Teso had a beard. You identified them by their uniforms and didn't look at their faces, correct? Yes. That's what I thought. That's the problem with this uni- with the uniform requirement. It makes a person lazy. A guard will see a housekeeping uniform and just assume the person belongs in the castle. It's too easy for someone to sneak about, which is why I keep the commander surrounded at all times by loyal people, and why Marge is the only housekeeper permitted to clean the commander's and my suites and offices. Valak's tone made me feel as if I had been transported to a classroom. Why not dismiss all the servants in the castle and use your own people? Soldiers make up the majority of our army. Civilians who joined prior to the takeover were made advisors or given other prominent positions. Some of the king's servants were already on our payroll and the others we, we paid double what they earned working for the king. Well-paid servants are happy servants. Does the entire castle staff get paid? Yes. Including the food taster? No. Why not? I hadn't even thought about receiving wages until Valak mentioned it. The food taster is paid in advance. How much is your life worth? (laughs) 